What's your name? Uh, Jacob. I watched you. I watched your review on uh, on the Forbidden before I got. Oh, the on bike. the Dreadnought. Yeah. Oh, seriously? That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Oh my. Oh, that's that funny. Funny. That's hilarious. You're like my first guy that's ever known who the fuck I was. If you drop me, don't feel bad. I'm not teenage fast by any means. And he dropped me almost as soon as we started. Today, I'm up riding on Thornhill in Maple Ridge, and this trail is called OSR. I met Jacob at the top. We chatted for a bit. He was on his way home, but I thought I'd try to follow him at the top of the trail, but I couldn't hang on to him for even a second. The kid is quick, or maybe I'm just slow. Anyway, OSR is a fantastic blue trail. The network in general is great for intermediates. If you have kids, or if you just like ripping through trails and not worrying about anything too consequential, this network is worth visiting. OSR isn't too steep, but it's got a great trail speed. It's got tons of little jumps, it's got some great berms, and just enough natural features to keep you on your toes. I gotta give props to the trail builders. They did a fantastic job here. I almost went left there. I was like, oh shit, did I lose them? And then that's OSR. That's OSR and you're going that way? Yeah. These little things are perfect. Like, yeah, they're fun. Like I always look for like intermediate stuff and this is perfect. It's good for everyone. Yeah. Oh, my kids will love this shit. I'll go this okay, way. sweet. It was nice to meet you. Yeah, you too. That is pretty sweet up there. I'm gonna have to do that one again. As I was saying, there is nothing intimidating about this trail. You can really open things up and let the trail speed dictate how fast you go. The jumps on this trail are pretty small. There are a couple drops on here that might spook beginners, but for intermediates, there is nothing to sweat about. The Thornhill Network is located in Maple Ridge, which is a suburb located about an hour outside of Vancouver. I'm blessed to live in North Vancouver, and I can ride the shore almost every day of the year. But it's nice to have some options to ride some trails that aren't as janky as what the shore is known for. I can head up to Squamish, and I often do, especially in the summers. I can go down to Bellingham, which has some amazing flow trails down there. But having Thornhill so close, now I'm going to add it to my regular list. It's fun to flow sometimes. I was also really impressed with the dirt out at Thornhill. It's been a really wet month, but the trails held up really well out there. I'm guessing the trail builders had something to do with it as well. I think they take pretty good care of that network. But the dirt out there can definitely handle a little bit of rain. Speaking of rain, it's definitely a rainforest out there. And I think a lot of us who live in the Pacific Northwest take for granted just how cool it is flying through a trail with ferns and mossy trees flying past you. The layout of the trails here is also really well done. There's the main fire road to get to the top, but there's also a network of climbing trails that run up if you prefer to climb on something a little bit more technical. Man, I gotta say, this trail is fucking sweet. It really is. You know, bring the kids and... Oh, uh, that's when I first built this trail, that was the whole reason behind it was so my kids could, you know, ride, but I could still come pin it with the boys. Yeah, yeah. I had a trail dweller today. The one to the right in there, that's Primo right now. It is, eh? No, I haven't done that. And then right next to that is Thornstar. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just did Thornstar. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's good. I mean, it's nice too, because every time I come up, I'm like, that's probably a gap. There's a ride around. I don't have to like yeah, shit my pants. It happens real cash, like, because this hill's so busy, right? Like, yeah. when I first built that, like everything was gap, but just to come more like that in between. Yeah. It's kind of the transition between like here and the jump line, like the, the guys who do the jump line, rip and dip. Rip and dip, okay. Yeah, I've heard of rip and dip. That's out of my pay grade. Yeah, it's uh, it, actually the top's not too bad. It's just once you get into the bottom, then you got some pretty full uh, gaps. Yeah, yeah, no, I, the landing's just, kill my back can't can't do it and then there's uh the guys who build the jump line it's called berman ernie okay and it's a lot of fun it's just a quick little uh, Ber berman ernie sounds like that's my my yeah, speed yeah super fun like uh same thing no real big gaps like yeah nothing like that everything you can just roll and yeah just hit cool. berms and have a good time okay well maybe i'll go i got one more me so maybe i'll try that dwellers to lynn it's, uh, it's like super flowy you don't have to worry about any big jumps yeah cool What's your name? Ryan. Ryan, I'm Derek. Right on. Yeah, this is absolutely money. This is so good. I can't wait to bring my kids. Cool, they're, they're gonna eat this up. To all right, thanks so much. Right on, Cheers. Time. Yeah, a big thanks to Ryan and all the other trail builders out there. You can tell how much time and effort they put into maintaining these trails, and they do a great job. You know, I think we underappreciate just how much work goes into all these trails that make our lives so much more enjoyable. So to all the trail builders and all the networks, thanks so much. OSR finishes off with a few tight turns and a creek crossing. 
It's one area of the trail after you've been flying through where you have to keep your head up just a little bit. There are a few rocks, a few roots, nothing crazy, but you just have to be a bit aware. If you want to see another fun flowy trail, check out this video here. Thanks for watching, and remember to always support your local trail builders. See you again next time.